Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. I'm back with another series of Question Time. Uh, those who remember from, from last year, I think it was the last episode of post was June 2011. Uh, I used to post these Question Time video uh, episodes where I answered a bunch of questions that people had answered or asked even uh, on my blog and on my Formspring account. Uh, I ended up just uh, kind of neglecting it after a while. It kind of got to the point where it was a bit, you know, a bit too much hassle to you know, capture the video and, uh, and and edit it all down. But I'm back with some new equipment. I've got my new GoPro camera, which if anyone's followed me on Twitter will have seen my little pictures of. Um, I'm using this with a, a posh lavalier mic, so hopefully the sound will be yeah, pretty good. And that was the main problem with my old flip camera. In Using it in this office, is it's kind of empty and there's just bare walls and it's quite echoey. So uh, I had to kind of set up on my computer and the camera and everything up in the loft where it was uh, better acoustics. But um, yeah, back with another question time series. So let's get started. I pulled a bunch of questions from my last episode and from my Formspring account, which is currently overflowing with questions. So hopefully I'll have enough to uh, you know, supply me over the next few videos. So uh, let's get started. So first off, we've got a question from Richard Carpenter. He asks, whenever you release new content on your blog, do you spend time submitting your com content to other websites like article directories and tutorial submission websites? If you do, it would be nice to know which sites you are using. Uh, yes, uh, to be honest, the, the number of sites I now submit to is a lot less than what I used to. Back in uh, 2007, 2008, even 2009, the whole blogging community in the, in the design industry was a lot uh, bigger. But nowadays, a lot of those sites have kind of fizzled out, such as Design Flow, that used to be a really popular one. But uh, the ones I use now, I, I always submit my tutorials to goodtutorials.com. I've submitted to there since day one in 2007. Uh, pixel2life.com, that's another tutorial directory site that I submit to. Um, designnews.com, uh, and then there's just a couple of other um, uh, design blogs that have got those uh, new submission forms. Uh, speckyboy.com is one that I still use, but like I mentioned, a lot of the, those blogs that did have those new submission forms and a lot of those you know, design news websites have now fizzled out. And websites like Dig, I've never really had much success with Dig, but they don't tend to drive as much traffic nowadays as they once did. To be honest, uh, I don't actually know how much traffic those sites now uh, push towards my blog. Um, I've always just done it just out of uh, habit, just submitted my uh, my new posts to all these tutorial sites. But I think a lot of the, the main traffic to a lot of my posts just comes from uh, Google searches, uh, and that obviously takes a while for them to get indexed. So a lot of the tutorials tend to get more exposure as time goes on. So the next question is from Anonymous. They didn't enter their name, but the question is, Hi Chris, I find it hard to get to grip on terms like resolution, PPI and DPI when I make, when I make pixel-based designs. Often I get stuck with questions like, is this picture large enough to use? Will my design look pixelated in the end? Do you have any tips on this? So uh, yes, resolution is something that uh, you, you kind of get to grips with if, you do, if you've done or do design for print. Uh, resolution in web design isn't as important, but nowadays with all these new high, high resolution retina displays coming out, I reckon that resolution is gonna start playing a bigger part in the, the world of web design. But uh, terms like PPI and DPI, they essentially mean the same thing. PPI is pixels per inch, whereas DPI is the more traditional dots per inch from the printing industry. They're often used uh, interchangeably, but the correct uh, uh, phrase for when you're creating digital designs in Photoshop will be PPI, because obviously you're working on pixels, not a printed dot. But people always say, you know, 300 DPI for a, a digital photograph. It, this really means 300 PPI, but it's, like I said, the term's interchangeable nowadays. In terms of whether the resolution is large enough, it depends what the uh, picture or image is gonna be used for. Like I mentioned, for web design, you can usually still get away with 72 DPI or PPI. Uh, although with high resolution screens now, if you wanted to get a really sharp image, maybe 150 PPI, uh, and with the retina displays, who knows, maybe even uh, upwards of, I don't know, even three, 300 DPI for, for those retina screens, but then you're, you're also factoring in higher uh, file sizes. For print, the minimum is usually 150 dpi, but the standard is 300 dpi. That'll allow you for a, a more crisper image. 
Then it's worth mentioning if you're designing like super large advertisements and, and, and large posters, you can usually get away with uh, 150 dpi uh, because the, those sort of large prints are going to be viewed from much further away. So in order to uh, avoid making your designs look pixelated and a mess altogether, you really need to take note on your resolutions. So let's say you start off with a 1000 by 1000 pixel design at 72 ppi. In order to make that 300 ppi, you go to image size and what you need to do is uncheck the resample image option and then change the resolution to 300. And what that'll do is it'll uh, take the available pixels and, and kind of scale it down uh, into the um, 300 dpi but obviously the, the overall file is going to be smaller uh, in dimensions because uh, how do we explain this you've got a thousand pixels in your width and height instead of using 72 pixels in every inch of that design you're now putting 300 of those pixels so obviously you're going to run out of pixels before you get to the, the size it was before so it's going to be much smaller but the, the, the crispness of the image is going to be the same. It's just going to be much smaller in actual physical size. On the other hand, if you start off with 1000 by 1000 pixel design at 300 dpi, you can scale that down to 72 dpi without unchecking the resample image. And that'll make the image larger because you've then got pixels to spare, which can then be put to use in making the, the image larger. Or if you want to keep it the same size, you can change both the width and height and the uh, actual resolution. That first scenario though is usually the one that's, uh, that you need to pay attention to. As long as you're starting with a high resolution, you can really do anything with it. Whereas if, if you're starting with a low resolution, that's where you can start running into trouble with it being not high enough resolution for print and uh, you're needing it at, at a larger size. If you then convert it to 300 dpi, it might be too small to use on the, on the, you know, the design you're wanting to use it for. So that's about it for this uh, first episode of this new series. I'll try and keep them pretty short, hopefully under 10 minutes. I know it can, they can kind of get, drag on a little bit with me just rambling on. So I'll uh, keep it short to two or three questions. It was two questions in this one because it's uh, obviously two pretty, pretty longish questions. But uh, I had a few more that I was going to cover, but I'll have to save those for the next one. If you've got any questions you want to ask, then drop them down in the comments or send me a message on Formspring. I don't think you have to register on there. It's pretty easy. But I'd be thrilled if anyone wants to hear me ramble on on anything they'd want to know about. It can be design related, anything personal, maybe even, uh, you know, my blogs and my gaming stuff. If you want to know anything about those, what sort of things I do outside of uh, life in front of the computer. So uh, that's about it for this episode. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know about the quality if you like this new GoPro camera and my little lavalier news reporter mic. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later.